As Africa's leading defense news portal, Defense Web aims to give you the latest updates on African defense, the South African National Defense Force, and the defense industry. In this week's edition, peacefulness decreases slightly in sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria receives its first six Super Takanos. The insurgency in Mozambique's capital Lagado grows amid Rwandan and Southern African development community deployments. Defense intelligence lays out maritime security threats in Africa. SA intelligence agencies not up to scratch, according to the Institute for Security Studies. And Defense Minister Mapisang Gokula believes South Africa's democracy is under threat as she is taken to task over unrest comments. In SANDF news, South African Special Forces arrive in Mozambique and the SA Navy is also part of Operation Prosper. In industry news, revitalizing South Africa's defense industry as part of the defense sector charter council's work. Salary woes continue at Denel and Arms Corps redefines its financial future. In African defense news, peacefulness decreases slightly in sub-Saharan Africa. Sub-Saharan Africa recorded a slight fall in peacefulness over the last year, according to the latest Global Peace Index GPR report produced by the Institute for Economics and Peace. On the 2021 GPR, the average country score for sub-Saharan Africa deteriorated by 0.5%. Of the 44 countries in the region, 21 improved, 22 deteriorated in score, and one remained unchanged. The region is less peaceful than the global average on the safety and security and ongoing conflict domains, but more peaceful than the global average on the militarization domain. Echoing the results from last year, disputes over election results and allegations of corruption led to a rise in civil unrest and political instability across the region, with violent protests breaking out in many countries. Nigeria receives first six Super Tucanos. The Nigerian Air Force on the 22nd of July received its first six A-29 Super Tucano aircraft out of 12 on order. After a week-long journey from the United States, the aircraft arrived in the northern city of Kano, where they were received by Defense Minister Bashir Magash, Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahana, and Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Olodayo Amao. The six aircraft, accompanied by Dornier 328 support aircraft, left the United States on 14th of July and transited through Canada, Spain, Greenland, Iceland, and Algeria before arriving in Nigeria. They will be officially commissioned into service in August. The remaining six Super Tucanos will be delivered before the end of October 2021. The four-year period between order and delivery has been partly due to challenges of configuring the aircraft to meet Nigerian Air Force specifications. Capo Legado insurgency grows amid Rwandan and Sadak deployment. The conflict in the Capo Legado province of Mozambique has led to over 3,000 deaths, displaced just under a million people, and is showing no signs of slowing down. If anything, Ansa al sana known locally as Al-Shabaab, the mostly local terrorist group responsible for the conflict, are growing in capacity and numbers. The Mozambican government has been criticized by academic politicians, security experts and journalists for their inability to thwart an initially small group of violent, desperately poor locals and address the underlying socio-economic factors that fuel this insurgency. Ansar al sunas proliferation since it formed in 2017 and their increasing capabilities have not gone unnoticed by external politicians and the wider international community. Rwanda, for reasons speculated to be political, has sent a thousand soldiers and police to conduct security and combat operations in the northern province. The Southern African Development Community, Sadak, will send a standby force at an unknown date. South African Special Forces arrived in Pemba on Monday as part of the Sadak Force, along with members of the Botswana Defense Force. The advance team is not expected to be immediately involved in direct combat operations against al Sana. Their main mission is to gather intelligence, conduct reconnaissance, advise the Mozambican military, and prepare command and control structures for the potential deployments of the full Sadak Brigade. Sadak Brigade. Up to 3,000 Sadak personnel may be deployed if deemed necessary. Security studies expert Jasmine Opperman, who has been analyzing the conflict since day one, said it looks like the Sadak multinational deployment will not be possible, and instead a much smaller Sadak deployment is likely, but where and when they will be deployed is still up for speculation. Opperman adds that the Rwandan forces are primarily offensive and have moved into Mueda offensive position and a Fungi defensive position in Capo Delgado and that a force of a thousand soldiers are not going to be able to cover such a big province. For the full report, you can visit our website. Defense Intelligence Lays Out Maritime Security Threats in Africa The Defense Intelligence Division of the South African National Defense Force has detailed some of the main threats and challenges facing South African navies and maritime security issues in Africa. Speaking at the Maritime Security Conference 2021 in June, Brigadier General VJ S. Radebe, representing Chief Intelligence Major General Thalita Nakato, noted that the maritime environment around Africa is beset with various forms of maritime crime. The lack of maritime security has in turn created the opportunity 
for the illegal exploitation of the maritime environment, he said. In East Africa, long stretches of uncontrolled coastline provide illegal groups with the opportunity to expand their areas of influence from land to sea. This has led to an increase in illegal flows of refugees, weapons and militants crossing the waters to and from East Africa and exacerbates the war between Amisom and Al-Shabaab, Radebe said. In West Africa, maritime order seems to be threatened more from pockets of lawlessness on land in more capable states including Nigeria and Cameroon than statelessness, Radebe said. For example, the densely populated Niger Delta in Nigeria is a central hub for piracy in the region and has developed into a hiding place for illegal armed groups. Maritime security problems in the Gulf of Guinea therefore remain rooted in the lack of effective government institutions and a prolonged sea blindness rather than fundamental absence of institutions. The recent terrorist activities in Cabo Delgado have had a direct impact on the current possibility to profit from its immense resources at sea. This is a result of the inability of Mozambique as a country to protect its own port facilities, Rudebe said. Rudebe noted that poor port security is a general phenomenon in Africa, and this has only benefited maritime crime, as African ports have become conduits for various forms of illicit trade. Poor maritime awareness has resulted in an increase in illegal trade moving through the maritime zones. Illegal fishing has also increased, and there has been numerous incidents of environmental pollution also reported around African waters. They say intelligence agencies, not up to scratch, time for change. A clarion call to repurpose South Africa's security system comes from probably the country's most respected observer and analyst, Jacques Saliers, founder and former executive director of the Institute for Security Studies. In the wake of debilitating civil unrest in two provinces, Saliers, now head of African Futures and Innovations at ISS, maintains South Africa will face internal security problems for years to come. He points out the failures of South Africa's intelligence services and police coupled with an uninspiring performance by the military reveal the absence of a coherent approach to national security security. Each of these departments, defense and police, is in crisis, and those responsible for the judiciary, prisons and border management also face problems. Reasons include lack of vision, political interference in state capture, bad management, poor coordination, weak policy and insufficient accountability, including through parliament. The essay's democracy under threat. Mapisa Ngokula. South Africa's democracy is under threat from rioting and looting, but Defence Military Veterans Minister Nasaviwe Mapisa Ngokula believes the deployments of 25,000 troops on the ground will overcome the counter revolution. Speaking to the Joint Standing Committee on Defence, JSCD, on the evening of 18th of July, Mapisa Ngokula said the unrest in KwaZulu Natal in Gauteng was not an attempted coup or insurrection, but probably signs of a counter revolution which is creeping in in the form of criminality and thuggery. She said coups and insurrections have leaders but no one has claimed responsibility for the unrest. We have serious socio-economic issues in this country, we have a high rate of unemployment, we have poverty, but all of those can never justify the kind of action which was taken in the past few days. The minister said it was strange that looters were going back to destroy infrastructure and attacking clinics and hospitals, hence her belief that unrest is a counter-revolution. She later apologized and said the attempted coup was an insurrection. In SANDF News, South African Special Forces arrive in Mozambique. South African Special Forces have arrived in Mozambique as part of the Southern African Development Community Regional Standby Force to help Mozambique defeat Islamist insurgency in the northern capital Lagado province. Special Forces appear to have arrived in Pemba on 19th of July, with photos showing a South African Air Force C-130BZ Hercules unloading soldiers and Hornet vehicles. The Hornet is used by South Africa's Special Forces. Photos also showed a Botswana Defence Force C-130 at Pemba unloading troops and equipment. Military sources told the Daily Maverick that leading elements of the Sadak Samba Force, including its South African commander, were in Mozambique. The deployment commander is believed to be Major General Solani Makanya, who served as commander of the SANDF peace mission to Burundi. The advanced team is not expected to be immediately involved in direct combat operations against al sana insurgents. SA Navy, also part of Operation Prosper. It's all hands on deck as the National Defence Force stretches itself to support police efforts to halt arson, looting and civil unrest in South Africa. The naval expression fits the activation and deployment of elements from the Maritime Reaction Squadron of the SA Navy. The deployment also saw boots on the ground in numbers, particularly in Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal, as well as the Western Cape, boosted thanks to airlift and trooping efforts of the SA Air Force. A pair of 28 Squadron C-130BZs flew a number of missions between AFB Waterkloof and King Shaka International Airport, north of Durban. Air Force Augusta A109 and RX helicopters are tasked for trooping and medevac, with Air Force Base Durban Base 15 Squadron, although not officially named, probably 
probably the lead rotorcraft unit. SA National Defense Force LinkedIn Post has its Joint Operations Tactical Headquarters in KwaZulu-Natal receive troops from the Simonstown-based Maritime Reaction Squadron. This naval component will reinforce forces deployed in KwaZulu-Natal in an effort to protect and secure critical infrastructure and prevent sporadic incidents of violence, burning of buildings, road blockages, looting and violence, the SANDF said. And in industry news, revitalizing SA Defence Industry, part of Defence Sector Charter Council's work. Transformation and revitalization of South Africa's ailing defence industry will drive the latest addition to organisations working in and for the sector as it battles continuously decreasing national defence budgets, skills losses and attempts to recover from the ravages of state capture. The Defence Sector Charter Council, DC, the SCC is a representative body comprising stakeholders in the South African Defence Industry, SADI, according to the SA National Defence Force SANDF statement. The existence of the Sector Council will expedite the transformation and revitalization of the SADI, ensuring consistent implementation of the Defence Sector Code, with a focus on specific targeted areas that are a challenge in transformation, it reads singling out manufacturing, technology business, exports and other technical areas as part of the SADI where transformation remains a problem notwithstanding the National Defence Sector Code. DSCC will work closely with companies and the local defence and related industries to ensure, among others, deployments of scarce skills, creation of employment and as well as growth and sustainability of small business. Advocate Voyisa Ramfele, Managing Director of RLDC Consulting and a former Arms Corps Corporate Compliance General Manager, will chair the newly formed DSCC. SCC and its 13 councillors. In April 2019, Defence Minister Nosiviru Mapisangukula launched the broad-based Black Economic Empowerment Defence Sector Charter after it was gazetted at the end of 2018 and revealed she was tasked with appointing a Defence Sector Charter Council to monitor implementation of the code and conduct regular reviews. The Defence Sector Charter is one outcome of the National Defence Industry Council launched in March 2016. It was created to address challenges facing the SADI, including limited economic growth and markets, as well as the reduced defence budget. The Department of Defence said in 2019 the purpose of the BBBEE Defence Sector Charter was to transform and grow the defence industry through ownership, management and skills development programmes with an emphasis on military veterans and SMMEs. Salary woes continue at Denel. At least one Denel division, Dynamics, will not be paying staff in July because of the client not honouring promises to make payments. This is according to an internal Denel Dynamics infogram, which starts by thanking staff for the missile and unmanned aerial vehicle designer and manufacturer for continued support during what management terms a very challenging time. The latest non-payments is in the wake of a miserable month for Dynamic staff who received a meager 30% of their salaries at the end of June. The situation around us being able to pay salaries for July has not improved as expected. The unfortunate result is we are unable to pay salaries for July 2021, mainly due to the clients not honouring promises to make payments after numerous attempts. We realise and regret the impact on employees and their families. Chief Executive Iselo Nshethlele writes in the in-house employee, employee communication. Arms Corps redefines its financial future. Arms Corps, according to the chief executive, is fully aware. The days of transfer payments are diminishing, with ways and means to generate own revenue, the watchword at the state-owned company. Writing in the latest edition of In and Out, the official Arms Corps newsletter, Solomizi Ambada, has it the organization had to quickly adapt to a changing environment fueled by declining defense budgets as a result of an overstretched financial national fiscus. We are expected to do more with less in order to deliver on our mandate as defined in the Arms Corps Act. This, according to him, sees the Arms Corps board hard at work to find viable ways to take advantage of markets opportunities. Arms Scores annual performance plan for the current financial year has that the state-owned entity will issue 71 tenders for the wider South African government defence and security sectors before 31st of March next year. Among items listed in the annual performance plan are any number with basic day-to-day -day applications for business and the wider economy. These include digitalization of records, replacing computer equipment, a unified computing system replacement, multifunctional printers, and external legal advisors. Thanks for listening to our podcast. For the latest leading and trusted news in defence areas, space and maritime security like and subscribe to our social media channels we are on facebook linkedin twitter instagram and youtube be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and have the latest aerospace defense and security developments delivered to your inbox stay safe and we'll see you next week